starship. Why no, ha? Huh? Starship serial number 15 flew and landed on May 5th of 2021. Since then, all we've gotten is... Crickets. Why? It's all about how risk is managed. At the start of Starship, SpaceX came up with a shopping list like this. We'll need a big stainless steel structure, a hot new rocket engine, a way to control the second stage, a second stage heat shield, a way to land the second stage, a reusable first stage, avionics to control everything, a launch site, and of course, a wheel of cheese. Once you have this list, you go through each of these and estimate how hard or risky they are going to be based upon the experience that you have as a company and the prior art elsewhere in the industry. We'll use a scale from one to 10. Cheese gets a one. We know how to get it and where to get it. A reusable first stage is probably a three. Super Heavy is mostly just a big version of the Falcon 9 first stage, and we have a ton of experience with that. Avionics is also probably a three, as we have lots of experience. A big rocket structure is likely a five. There's a lot of experience using stainless steel, but it's a new material for us, and this is a big rocket. We'll need to do a lot of work, but there are unlikely to be any showstoppers. Same with the launch site. Lots of structures, but probably no showstoppers. Controlling the second stage in the air and landing it are probably around seven. We can model the aerodynamics of the fin controls that we are planning, and while the landing requires a unique maneuver, landing with engines is something we already understand well. That leaves the new engine and second stage heat shield as the hardest problems we have to solve. The full flow staged combustion cycle that Raptor uses has never been flown, so there's not much prior art, and we need it to have very high performance early in its lifetime. That's definitely a 10. We have one example of a large vehicle with tiles in the space shuttle. Okay, the Soviet Buran shuttle probably counts as a second. And the approach on shuttle wasn't really a success. Our vehicle is really big and needs to be light. Definitely a 10. This defines the risk profile for the project. The higher the number, the more that item keeps us up at night. We can work on the tanks and engines and the avionics to get started. Then you start iterating. After a while, SN5 hopped successfully. What did we accomplish, and how did that change our risk structure? We built a number of full-size tanks, and they seem to be working pretty well at this point. We've learned a lot, and we are now much more confident. So that risk goes from a 5 down to a 3. Our engine is working well enough for this sort of hop, though there's still a lot of work. Let's say it goes from a 10 to a 7. The next four items we didn't work on. Let's say the avionics went from a 3 down to a 2. We call this process retiring risk. We had some risks that we were worried about, but now we are less worried, so some part of that risk has been retired. Obviously, our long-term goal is to retire all of the risk. Looking at our list, what looks scary? There are three second stage items that are very risky. We can't do the heat shield right now, but we can work on the control and landing items, which led us to SN15, which flew to about 10 kilometers and landed successfully. We've now flown multiple engines and they've been working okay, so let's knock the engine risk down to five. Our fins work great in the lower atmosphere, but are still unproven during re-entry. Let's drop them to a four. Our landing works successfully. It took a few tries, but we know how to do the flip and we got the landing to work. I'm gonna put that down to a two. We have retired a lot more risk. Moving forward to the present day, here is roughly where I see our risks. Our overall profile looks much better, but we have also reached a point where making progress on the highest risks is going to require an orbital flight. In particular, the heat shield is very risky. This is what we refer to as the long pole, or the item that is most likely to cause us to be late. Working on items that aren't the long pole has a very limited ability to get the long pole done more quickly, but some of them do have the ability to delay the long pole further. In particular, if we worked on first and second stage landings, we could damage the launch infrastructure, and that could delay tests of the second stage heat shield considerably. Why no HOP? HOP can't make heat shield testing better. 
Hawk could slow heat shield testing down. Landing is not a high-risk item. Thank you for your attention.